today I am going to be inserting something into the bottom of my boat. Now I made a conscious decision to change all these some time ago because it's a 40 year old boat. I don't know when they're done. They might even be the original ones. And it's very expensive. It really is. From the through hole fittings to the rest of the bits that go on top, like the um, ball valves and stuff, it's a lot of money. And I'm really glad I did this actually because when I took the old one out, I realized it was really, really undersized. Somebody had put a tiny through hole fitting in a much bigger hole. And it makes you realize that at times, you know, a sociopath is going to be working on a second hand boat. But luckily, we found that one. Anyway, the hole. The hole in the hull was very near two inches, two inches BSP. So we got a two inch BSP and made it a few millimeters wider. And that is exactly what this baby is. And today this one's going to be going in. BSP is a very funny thing really, because at the end of the day, most people would be familiar with measuring the outside here. Whereas with BSP, it tends to be more the inside of the pipe. So even though this is two inch BSP, the actual width from there to there is more than two inches. I see if you look at this quickly this is two inches but it's the inside that's two inches it's not the outside so this can throw a lot of people when you come to put these fittings on. It's actually just under 60. What we've done is I don't want to stick anything in onto on top of paint or anti foul so what I've done is I've sanded back the entire area made it nice and clean I widened the hole because it was a couple of millimeters out we've got a really snug fit now and then afterwards I sealed everything up with um, polyester resin existing hole bigger what you do is you just put an insert in like this and then you can you can use that to drill in from the inside no, basically once the hole was increased in size by I think it was about two or three millimeters, it opened up a fresh surface of wood inside where the backing plate is. I don't want that exposed in case any moisture does come in because it will rot from the inside out. So what we did is we sealed it with resin. We used polyester resin, we're not laminating, so that did a fine job. The outside surface, took all the old anti-foul off, back to the GRP, sealed that again. Now I'm going to clean it up with acetone and then we're going to um, fit the through hole fitting. Okay, here is the inside, basically. As you can see, it had an existing backing plate and all that lovely fresh wood in there has now been beautifully sealed with, with resin. And that is basically two inch BSP, which works out about 60 mil, and it's a nice tight fit. But before we go gluing anything up or sealing anything up, we're gonna be doing a dry fit. Look how tight this is. This is exactly how I want it to be. Always do a dry fit. I mean, always. No exceptions. Now look at that. That's beautiful. this job you will require a man spanner. If you don't have one of these in your man cave then I'm afraid it's just a cave. Right I've tightened that up and I'm still seeing a bit of a gap there. So I'm going to tighten that up some more make sure I can get it flush. Yeah, it needs to be adjusted a bit. That's super tight now, so I don't want to go any tighter. Remember, this stuff is bronze, and it's you know, you could probably thread it if you did it too tight. But believe it or not, this spanner here is on the maximum setting. Right, well, that's basically as tight as we can go. 
and it seems to be pretty okay. There is a slight gap just here. stuck some masking tape around the base here just so I know where to add the sealant up to so we get a nice tidy job. Okay so the next stage is to clean everything with acetone including this. wear a pair of gloves with this stuff because it sticks like dog's mess to a blanket. Now the first thing I'm going to do is get some on the inside of this. I'm going to make sure we've got a nice coat of that on the inside. Like I said, this is messy stuff, but I'm really quite pleased with that. It almost seems a shame to anti-foul over it, but at the end of the day, if you don't put any anti-foul on this, this is one area you really don't want to get fouled up. Now one thing that is easy to overlook is cleaning up the inside as well, because you've got to remember, on top of this is going to go some kind of stopcock or, or ball valve, uh, maybe some elbows, maybe a hose tail fitting, we don't know yet. So if you've got all that gunk on, this uh, sealant stuff, you're never ever going to get this um, additional auxiliary connections on. And if you start messing around with this now and it starts spinning in the hole, you've lost your seal and you're going to have to start all over again. A bit to clean up really at the end of the day is this section here. If you have any of that crap left on there, you're never going to get anything on. And you want that now to sit there. See how I've got a little bit around the thread? They should all be sealed, and it's all sealed lovely around the end. So I'm very, very, very happy with that. I have to say, the reality of the situation is I'm not going to know whether it works until the boat goes back in the water. Luckily, that's not today. I'm going to leave that now, just let it seal, let it go off. I've tightened it as much as I can. Some people say leave it for a day, then come and tighten it up. No, I don't. I do it straight away, bang get it nice and tight. I don't want to have to have that spinning around at all. So that's one through hole fitting in. I've now got to do the inlet for the toilet and a couple on the back. And apart from that, that's it for today. So hope you're surviving this COVID nonsense, folks, and uh, see you in the next video.